Back and thank you for staying with KTN Prime. Now it has been a busy day at KICC, even as President Uhuru Kenyatta and our former Prime Minister Raila Odinga led the launch of the referendum drive to amend some tenets of the Constitution right there. We definitely want to delve deeper into this. And I'm now joined by John Badi, who's a National Assembly Minority Leader, as well as Ali Swahome, who's the Kandara Member of Parliament. Gentlemen and lady, many thanks for your time. I'd like to start with you, John Badi. Are you happy with the BBI draft bill? Can you comfortably say that it covers the nine thematic areas that bathed this whole process. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joseph uh, Rogers, for having me. Uh, let me uh, start by thank you for having us in the studio today. I just want to start by answering your question. Yes, I'm uh, happy with the, the draft, I mean, with the published uh, draft bill. Uh, which is going to the people of Kenya to append their signatures on. As to whether it has covered all the nine thematic areas, I think it has largely covered most of the nine points agenda. But there are certain aspects of the nine, ag and the nine point agenda, or some, ag some items among the nine, which are going to be covered under statutory legislation. So not all of them uh, had to be captured in the Constitution. Uh, that, I think, also should uh, go out clearly. So the proposed constitutional amendment is, uh, to me, very positive, very progressive, uh, very forward-looking. Many thanks. Now, Alice Wahome, I mean, even as you give us your take on the BBI draft bill that has just been published, there were issues that were raised during the launch of the BBI document earlier on in Bournemouth a few weeks back. In your view, have these particular issues been addressed or not? Uh, I, I want to answer the question as to whether I'm happy with the document. I would say, you know, it's not really an individual's happiness. It's uh, whether majority of Kenyans are happy with this document. Personally, I'm not happy with the issues captured. Some of the issues are still not going to help this country. And I'm taking that in, um, in relation to the nine points that you've talked about. And key among those nine points was inclusivity. The other one was equitable distribution of resources, uh, uniting the country, particularly uniting the country. I do not see where the place of this document in that, in that work. It, it, maybe it was a thought that has not been able to be captured because you cannot capture by the end of the document. I think the process is most important to tell you whether you will succeed in uniting the country. So in my view, if the major, uh, the major point or uh, purpose of this was to have a united country, we are doing very badly. The proponents should be aware that they are leaving a very big number of Kenyans behind. And you can see the social media today. I think most of the people are responding that they will not support this uh, document. All right, that's very keen to note, and I'm sure Mishimi Mbadi will have something to mention on that. But Mbadi, even as you answer, there were issues around the president's appointing and firing authority. Has this been handled in any way in the final draft bill that has been published? Uh, first of all, Jesse, let me answer Alice that, uh, number one, on issue of inclusivity, it depends on exactly what... Uh, just uh, Ro Rogers, I'm still hearing myself back. I don't know why it can't be fixed, because it interferes. Well, apologies for that. We're trying to fix that. Um, it should be sorted out in a few, but kindly continue, sir. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that on the issue of inclusivity, I think Alice has talked about uh, p three areas where he thinks uh, the document is deficient. He has, she has mentioned the area of inclusivity. It depends on what exactly uh, is her understanding of inclusivity or what she wanted uh, to be accommodated uh, to qualify for in, uh, an, an, an inclusive document. If you look at the area of inclusivity, there is the issue of gender inclusivity. That has been properly and adequately addressed. The issue that has been outstanding for quite some time. Uh, we are aware that even the Chief Justice had advised for the dissolution of Parliament, and that has now been clarified and captured with clarity and very specific. On the other aspect that I want to also mention on issue of inclusivity is that the winner takes 
all attitude has been addressed. It may not be addressed to the satisfaction of Alice Wahome and others, but it is addressed to the satisfaction of other Kenyans. Because when now, uh, those who compete in election and the one who garners the second largest votes in a presidential election now finds him, his way or her way uh, to parliament or to the National Assembly as leader of official opposition, that would allow uh, such a serious contender to participate in national discourse in a formalized manner. There is also the aspect of creating a position of the prime minister, which definitely is a very senior position and would also uh, be used as a way, because definitely you cannot have president, deputy president, prime minister, and the two deputy prime ministers from the same area. It goes without saying, you can't put everything in the constitution, but for any country to progress, definitely the president must be looking outside other areas and have to get such senior appointments from elsewhere. On issue of equitable distribution, I wish Alice just looked at uh, uh, the provisions that are under chapter 12 of the constitution, the amendments that are proposed there, uh, one of the amendments is uh, handling the issue of resource distribution and uh, it, say, it clearly spells out uh, the per capita, uh, income, I mean per capita revenue allocation uh, per county and she can look at that and uh, she will uh, satisfy herself whether that is sufficient or not. There is the issue of uniting the country that Alice has also talked about. In my view, I think this is constitutional amendment. There are other statute legislation. In fact, even in the, this constitution or the proposed constitutional amendment, it is spelled out that there are certain aspects that still will go through legislation. So a lot will still need to be done. You cannot put in everything in the constitution. But uh, Rogers, in my view, in a nutshell, I want to just say that uh, largely um, this document is progressive. I think it needs to be supported. Uh, going forward. They, they talk about social media. Social media sometimes uh, some people react even without reading the document. If you ask me, this document is largely capturing what needed to be captured. I want to, if you allow me, Rogers, just to take you to chapter 12 of our constitution. One, it provides for more allocation of resources to counties at 35%. It has also created uh, the World Development Fund. But above all, it has created the Constituency Development Fund, something that has been very controversial. Yet everyone believes and everybody says, if you go to the village, and Alice Wahome will confirm to this because she has been a member of parliament of a constituency, um, of a single member constituency, that National Government uh, Constituency Development Fund is a very popular fund in terms of uh, bring a development to the grassroots. And now anchoring it in the constitution, where the, the argument has been that this fund is good, but is unconstitutional. Now, bringing it to the constitution, I don't think is a bad idea. If you look at some of the provisions, there are certain ambiguities that have been in the current constitution, including the oversighting of the revenue that goes to the county. The constitution, as it is today, provides that the Senate oversight only the national revenue that goes to the counties. But now the amendment is bringing in even the own source revenue that is generated at the counties and the revenue that would be borrowed by counties. The Senate would now oversight that. There is clarity on even how MCAs who, chooses to run, who choose to run uh, for members of uh, National Assembly or the Senate, they don't have to resign. The current constitution provides that an MCA, for, an MCA to run for a parliamentary seat, an MCA has to resign. So if you ask me, uh, largely, uh, this constitution, but uh, just uh, before you, uh, before you uh, I go, do you ask Should me you... about the appointing authority yes. of the president? On the issues of imperial presidents, which have quickly... been raised a couple of times, your quick reply to that. <laughs> I can quickly reply to that in two, two minutes, if you allow me. Number one, I think the concern that Kenyans expressed with the appointing authority of the president, they were talking about the ombudsman, uh, the ombudsman, the appointment of the ombudsman. But if you look at the appointment of the ombudsman, it's purely ceremonial, just like the president appoints 
the chief justice and appoints other independent office holders like auditor general and controller of budget. There is a process that leads to that appointment. And if you look at the ombudsman, uh, the powers that are given to ombudsman, it's not the powers that would water down. Uh, the powers of the Judicial Service Commission. So people have just been talking about imperial presidency, the president having too much powers. I don't see it. The issue of appointing the prime minister, I think Kenyans largely agree that the executive authority of this country should be exercised by someone who is elected directly by the people. There are some of us who have a different opinion to that. If you ask me, I am still a, a full believer in a pure parliamentary system that we should be having a prime minister who is elected through a system uh, where he is the leader of majority, or the leader of the party with the majority in parliament. But then the, the people of Kenya, and we have to compromise in the constitution making, the people of Kenya want to elect their president. After that, you cannot create another position that would uh, compete directly for power with the president. That is what, again, the people of Kenya have talked about. Now, once the president appoints the president, and he just doesn't have to appoint it. In fact, if you look at the provisions in this draft bill, it says that that person must be a member of parliament and the leader in the National Assembly of the largest party or coalition of parties. If that person fails to attract the majority support in the National Assembly, so when now uh, then a process kicks where the largest party, in fact it is now not even the president, what the draft says is that the largest party will propose a member who if elected, if supported by majority of the members, will be the prime minister. So I don't see, All right. unless someone tells me, maybe Alice will tell me, how they see imperial presidency out of these proposed amendments. Okay. Mishimi Wambadi, let, let's just listen to what Alice anything. Wahome has to say in reply to that. You've transversed a couple of issues in terms of okay. inclusivity, if it has actually been achieved in terms of division of resources, equitable division of resources. And Alice Wahome, I'd also like your take on the issue of the presidency and the imperial presidency tag that seems not to live it. Okay. Uh, I will start with uniting the country. Because this, for me, is a statement that the president and the prime minister has kept on uh, repeating that they intend to unite the country. And indeed, they tried to delink uh, the process from the 2022 positioning. And, the, and, and the, uh, the question of inclusivity, therefore, becomes a very large issue. If you look at our current constitution, from the principles, you know, in Article 10, uh, the principles of, uh, and values of this country, constitution of our country, you'll find that inclusivity, transparency, uh, equitable, equity, equity and equitability and sharing of resources, all these things are described and very well covered in the current constitution. Indeed, including minorities in Article 100, the women, gender, women in Article 27, you know, the inclusion of women, also in Article 81. So it is not that there was deficiency in the current constitution. And therefore, when you now come to say that you have covered the question of inclusivity because you have uh, captured the question of gender, I want to tell Buddy, and, and uh, because he has referred to gender equality, he has said that we will now be able to achieve that. I think I could agree that at the Senate level, we will be able to uh, achieve that because there will be a male and a female senator in every county. But when we come to the National Assembly, where the national government resources are actually oversighted, you will find that we had 47 women uh, elected from each county, um, a woman from each county, and six women uh, from uh, nominated uh, uh, sector. The 47 was a platform upon which women were required to uh, to be visible, to create their presence, to work and experience how to, you know, engage the public in terms of political space. Uh, and, and of course, they were elected by both uh, men and women in their counties. And that platform has now completely been disrupted. The 47 women will have to identify new constituencies or new offices upon which they will actually now run. Uh, therefore, it is not uh, acceptable, and I, I don't think I would agree, therefore, that we will be achieving uh, gender equality. 
what we have is a topper that we shall have 360. And this is, and Kenyans must know that the current um, parliament is 349. And we have been receiving backlash that it is a very huge parliament. Now, the parliament that we have is proposed here is 360 members of parliament. Uh, and, and those will be elected directly. And there is no guarantee that you'll have women. It is possible that we can get maybe 30, going by the ratio that we have today where we have only 23 members out of 290 constituencies, I would push it now in the next parliament, if this were to go through, maybe to 30, which then means you will have a topper of about, I think I'm trying to calculate those uh, mathematics, and I think we'll be having a top up of more than 150 women nominated, people who have no authority of direct elections from the constituency or by the voter, and therefore with the uh, the proposals that we have here of uh, appointing, uh, even uh, nominating uh, a prime minister from the party with the largest members, it means this big number of people who are nominated by the party are likely to be misused, are likely to have no, no, uh, no independence of their own. And in fact, even the current parliament, the question of members' independence has been a very big issue that we have quite often played the role of a rubber stamp for the executive. So inclusivity, we were talking about inclusivity in terms of sharing governments, sharing resources, inclusivity. And I think that's what Kenyans wanted when they were talking about inclusivity. Of course, they wanted to see themselves within the government. To see themselves within the government is not the creation of the office of the prime minister and two deputies, because those are three offices. It was how then when you get the executive authority of the country, you are able to distribute resources equitably to all the communities without discrimination or without looking at whether they gave you the vote. And that's why the idea of devolution, devolution was put in the current constitution. Devolution was given a minimum of 15% of revenue, but that 15% has not even been properly achieved. Of course, you can say right now, when we look at how the revenue sharing has gone, it's like we are actually giving, and it has been reported that the counties are getting 33%. Although the constitution says, gives a minimum guarantee of 15%, and now we are told that it will provide 35%. It means if you want to push it to 50, then that would be a challenge. But let's be very honest and candid. Can we be able even to achieve the 35? And are we able to even give the 15% today? That has not happened. Ask the governors today, they will tell you that they have four months unpaid uh, resources. They have not even been able to pay salaries. Why? Because they have not been given the resources. There is a problem here. So inclusivity for me, for women, has not been achieved. For minorities, you have seen disability, persons with disability, there are two proposed seats, women in, for purposes of nomination, another two proposed, the youth, uh, two proposed seats, a male and a female. So how will the communities then feel that they are included in this country? During elections, it is always, it, it is true that we are having like two major di divides the opposition and the majority. When you look at the opposition and the majority, that will still occur in the next general elections. And you want to tell Kenyans that they will feel included because somebody will go to the opposition. The official opposition leader will have an office. It will be facilitated. Something actually that Bandi and his, uh, and his uh, minority would have been able to achieve through registration because we have the office of minority of the opposition leader in this country by government. And therefore, we could have achieved that All right. through policy and legislation. On the question of winner takes it all. Briefly, briefly. The president, the president will nominate or his party with the largest, because the president is likely to come from the party with the largest number of members of parliament, will uh, nominate the prime minister who will have executive powers and who will also supervise the Ministry of Government Departments. Therefore, 
the same party that has the president will produce the prime minister and produce cabinet ministers. And if they want to do it skewed, there is nothing in this constitution that will prevent them from doing that. So, so for me, when uh, you, we, the, this, the judiciary of Guzman, uh, of Guzman being appointed by the president is a disaster because even if you nominate and then approval will be by the Senate, I think it's a disaster because the doctrine of separation of powers, uh, Jesse, will be, uh, we, 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 we will stop operating All and right. working. All right. You remember we are talking about an independent judiciary, independent uh, executive, independent parliament. So if the president will nominate for approval of the Senate, and how many people have faith in uh, how our institution of parliament is working, that they will be now the one now approving. I think you are putting the judiciary and for purposes of discipline, I think I've seen that there will be the ones discipline, the pre-manding, but they haven't even said whether that uh, ombudsman will be able to sack the judges because All right, the me is the one that is supposed to do that. So okay. I want to tell Badi that the winner takes the all mentality will still remain as long as we are voting for a president in this country who will then appoint a prime minister All who right, will Mishimio. have executive authority. Yeah. Well, well, those are very contentious issues and we'll definitely give Mbadi the right of reply, including on the doctrine of separation of powers. But we definitely have to take a short break right here on KTN Prime. For viewers back at home, do stay with us. We'll be back with the minority leader in the National Assembly, John Badi, and the Kandara Member of Parliament, Ali Swahome, as we delve deeper into the contents of the BBI draft bill that has been published. You're watching KTM Prime. Do stay with us.